Welcome to the part 7 of uh, Advanced Network Speciality Certification. If you are not yet subscribed, do so. It will help you with all kind of cloud certifications. So let us quickly check this question now. Um, there is, you are a network engineer. You have to design a solution for what? Uh, to detect network anomalies. Okay. So what has been configured? Traffic mirroring has been configured. So in this case, what does traffic mirroring mean? See, it is a technique used in computer networks to copy network traffic from one location to other for monitoring and analysis purposes. So it is having a copy machine of your network data. So you are copying that network data to other place. Why? Why are you copying it? Because you want to you want to monitor and analyze. Like for example, what for it, any anomalies or looking at the data, you want to know if a network hack is happening. You want to check those things. Okay, that is why we do it. Okay, traffic mirroring is fine. So why we are doing traffic mirroring? We'll take this data and on EC2, you know, so there is EC2 instance. So on this EC2, uh, there are tools to analyze this data, this traffic. So this EC2 is very important for us. And this EC2 solution should be highly available. To meet the demand of mirror traffic so a lot of data would come it should be highly available currently it is overwhelmed you see this it currently they are saying it is overwhelmed so what should we do see when it is a question of network uh, alb or application load balancer is not a good choice so options b and d are wrong See, NLB is it is for internal traffic in a single region. Our question is not saying that we are geographically dispersed. So we can safely assume it is single region and hence GLB not useful because GLB is useful for global multi-region kind of application and our question is not telling that this is multi-region so our answer is nlb because it is single region or one or more az okay and the other important thing is you can uh, you know it distributes your traffic across multiple targets it can be ec2 instances or ip addresses or containers so option a is our answer see there is an on premise data center applications are running in production there and they also have uh, aws vpc this yellow box is aws so so applications that run here no? they want to talk to this guys in on aws and all sort of uh, dns resolver is there on premises here okay and what is required here is uh, we have to um Uh, make use of uh, route 53 resolver points so route 53 responds uh, this resolver it responds recursively to dns queries from aws sources see, see currently these guys use open source recursive dns resolver now we have to use route 53 resolver see why because as a network engineer you should know that aws has this service so don't use any open source or custom uh, dns resolver so from a steps perspective there are three options we have to choose so we will have to configure on premises dns resolver to forward example.com domain queries to ip addresses of the inbound endpoint once that is done we create a resolver inbound endpoint in route 53 
and uh, resolve our outbound endpoint. We have to create these two endpoints, and then we create a resolver rule to forward cop.example.com to the IP addresses of the on premises DNS resolver. Now, uh, this is the next one. So, there is a uh, government contractor, they are designing multi account environment with multiple VPCs for a customer. So you have multiple VPCs like this and multiple accounts are there, okay? Now, a, a network security policy requires all traffic between any two VPCs to be able to be inspected. So this guy talks to this guy or this guy talks to this guy using a third party appliance this blue box is the third party appliance you should be you know able to see that you know, like it should be transparent for inspection now the customer is saying boss i want to to use transit gateway okay so this we have to use there is no other go okay the another thing is automated failover should happen if any failure happens the failover should automatically happen like you are a team lead and you have one say uh tableau administrator now that guy falls sick automatically the other guy who's a tableau developer should uh, step up as W administrator that is called automated failover that is one and highly available across multiple ages see it is if multiple ages are there if it, some failure happens in one AZ, application will still run on other ages okay and asymmetric routing is not supported by the app, inspection appliances okay so what should we do combination of two steps see we would uh, create two clusters and it will be across AZs. okay it should be across AZs because if it is not across AZs, it will not be highly available the question itself says it should be across ACs. That is one. And the inspection VPC should be connected to the transit gateway. And then we should create a target group, register the third party appliance with that target group because then only the third party appliance can talk to these VPCs. Okay. And the next thing we should do is now. Once that is set, we should configure two tables on the transit gateway. This is for routing. So you create one route table uh, with all the attachments of application VPC and another route table for inspection VPC attachments. So two route tables because two side routing would happen. So these two would be our answers. So if you are serious about certification, yeah, as your or AWS or Google Cloud certification. Uh, this channel has so many playlists. You can view those playlists. Uh, approximately right, right now we are having uh, 900 plus videos. So we are now at the end of part seven. Uh, their previous parts are in the members area. You can become cloud kernel or cloud ninja member and gain the access we will post some more content